Hello, beautiful people. In the light of the newly implemented BR reduction of the Angle 162 from beta rating 6.3 to now 6.0, I wanted to make a small guide or how-to video on this German Enfant Terrible. Hope you enjoy. The Heinkel 162 Volksjäger or People's Fighter was also from the Heinkel company itself called Spatz, meaning Sparrow. The Sparrow name was in reference to the large ME262 called Schwalbe or Swallow. The 162 was also known as the Salamander. The 162 was part of a German large stitch fighter program called Jäger Notprogramm or Emergency Fighter Program. Another aircraft also being allowed into the program was the Donny 335 which is also playable in War Thunder. Let's look at some of the pros and cons. Some of the pros. Speed. The 162 is for the now better rating 6.0, but definitely also for the previous better rating 6.3, very fast. Top speed is reached at 6000 meters with 840 kilometers an hour. That number is a little irrelevant though, since most combat in War Thunder, especially at better rating 6.0, is at low altitudes. But even at low altitudes, it's still the fastest aircraft at its battle rating. Structural limits. So it's the fastest aircraft on the block, and it has a very good rate of climb with over 23 meters a second. The wings are extremely strong also, and only rip past 1000 km an hour. So they are more or less indestructible in that regard. The little jets flaps are also very strong. Combat and takeoff flap limits are very high with 677 and 648 km an hour. Even the landing flaps are incredibly strong with 500 km an hour. The speed for the landing gear is also good with 350 km an hour. Size. The Volkswagen is a small aircraft. It's basically as long as the BF-109, but it has very short wings, making it a small target to hit, especially from behind or in a head-on scenario. Armament. The jet is equipped with two 20mm MG-151s mounted in the fuselage. This means that you basically do not have to worry about gun convergence, making them easy to aim with, and more about that in a bit. And some of the cons, which there are quite a few of. Turn time. So most of the numbers look great, but one of the most important metrics in the game for a fighter is the turn time. And here, the 162 lets you down. The poor turn time is probably the number one reason why people get shut down in the Volksjäger. The turn time is 30 seconds. And that ain't good. 30 seconds is as high as some medium bombers. Energy. If you try turn fighting in the Salamander, you lose the one commodity you need in order to survive. The wings bleed off energy very fast, and in combination with the last turn radius, a slow 162 is a dead 162. Overheating. If you push the engine past 100% and to the max of 108%, it may take seconds before the engine overheats when you're below 2000 meters. Now you can stay at 108% for a little while, but looking at all those red numbers is not good for your mental health. And it takes time for you to figure out when to drop down to 100% before you damage the engine. Past 6000 meters, you can more or less keep the engine at 108% indefinitely. Landing. It's great to be this fast, but trying to get rid of the last speed before landing takes time. And you have to use the flaps and wiggle the 162 around a lot to drop that extra speed. You can land at over 300 km an hour, but stopping before the runway ends is another issue. This also means that altogether, the turnaround time where you land, rearm and get airborne again takes longer time in the 162 compared to a regular prop plane. Ammunition. A count for the armament is the low ammo count. Each of the two cannons only have 120 shells. Then you're out. Completely. The 162 cannot carry any secondary weapons at all. Fuel. We have just over 8 minutes worth of fuel on minimum. In air battles you need to take off, gain altitude and then get into a position. All that takes time, easily more than half of the fuel time of the 162. This leaves you with only 1 or 2 attempts at shooting down a bomb or a fighter before you have to return to base. Compression. It's easy to get to 800 km an hour and a dive with the 162. But at these speeds, the jet becomes difficult to control precisely, and getting good aim shut off in a diving attack at that speed can be difficult. Last second corrections will most likely make you miss the target.
The Canon Thunder 162 is the familiar MG151. With the recent armor pin buff to most aircraft weapons, the previously almost useless armor piercing high explosive shell for the 151 got a little buff. Not to the extent of the US and British 20mm cannons of course, because we can't have that. But the few extra millimeters of armor pin graciously granted to the German MG151 did help some. The armor piercing high explosive shell can now at 100 meters pin 25 millimeters. But that number is almost useless since you at that range will not survive anyhow. It's more useful to look at 500 meters where we find 18 millimeters of armor pin, which is still enough to pin light tanks and the odd medium tank from the top down. The other more familiar shell, the 20 mm high explosive miniature shots, is as deadly as ever. As already mentioned for the cannons, the largest gun is the low ammunition count overall the little jet can carry. If you can master, or rather learn to love the 162, it will treat you very well. But if you rarely use the 162, then you most likely will have a poor experience. You need a lot of discipline to get the most out of this aircraft. If you deviate from the rather strict way you need to use this little jet, you will get punished. The Volkswagen is not forgiving at all. The regular limited minimum fuel amount of 8 minutes is very low. You spend so much of the fuel just to get into position and then maybe have a couple of minutes of actual fighting. You are more or less forced into taking 20 minutes of fuel with you if you want to be of any real use. The fuel issue combined with the low ammo pool makes it, in my opinion, rather limited to use in air battles. But of course you can still destroy a bomber or a fighter with the limited ammo you have. In real life the 162 was designed for the one purpose of destroying enemy bombers. It was meant to gain attitude quick, attack bombers and then return to base. At Battlewing 6.0 there are few bombers to find though and if you find yourself in up tiers, chances to meet an enemy bomber is almost zero. Against other low tier jets the 162 is not the best aircraft either. High ranked prop aircraft are also very fast with much better flight characteristics overall and fast stronger armament. Another issue is a popular bomber around the battle rating. If you happen to end up in a 5-7 game, a lot of battles will consist of teammates using a German Ju-288 bomber, so you can end up with few fellow fighters on your team. The last issue I will address for air battles is the rate of climb. It's good on paper and fine once you are at speed. However, the initial climb from the airfield to altitude is very slow. In order to get around this, I suggest that you side climb like a bomber. If you climb directly towards the enemy, you will never get to altitude and speed before you are caught, and the 162 at low speed is a sitting duck. I prefer, as you can see here, to use the 162 in mixed battles. Here the concern about minimum fuel is not really present. You also spawn in the air, so you don't have to worry about the slow initial climb either. Another nice thing about the 162 in mixed battles is the low spawn cost. A single vehicle kill or upon capture by yourself should be enough to put you into the seat of the Volksjäger. But coming back to the way to use the 162. If you think that planes like the P-47 or the 335 are super boomers, the 162 takes it to the next level. You absolutely should only turn with enemy fighters if you are confident that you will be able to get some aim shots off, otherwise don't. The only thing that will happen is you waste that precious energy that will keep you alive. So gain altitude, which in the 162 is very easy, and start circling the battlefield. Dive on enemy airplanes, but only follow them into turns if they do not turn too sharply. If they do, break off and point the nose straight up to gain altitude, and rinse and repeat. With the increase of armor pin for the MG151's armor piercing explosive shell, there is now a better chance of punching through the top armor of tanks. Around battle rating 6.0 there will be a ton of M18s and M41 Bulldogs that can easily be destroyed with the MG151's armor piercing high explosive shell. Another great way of using the 162 is to specifically target SPAGs. Here the AP shell will also be great. The combination of your very high flight speed and small airframe will make it hard for the enemy SPAG to target you compared to a prop fighter. This way you will also help out friendly fighters and let them use their primary and secondary weapons in relative peace.
What you often cannot do in both air and mixed battles is aiding a friendly fighter in trouble. Because of the strict ways you need to use the 162 in order to be effective, you are more or less only able to use the hit and run tactic. It can be pretty frustrating to watch an enemy teammate getting ganged up on, and the only thing you can do is take those few aim shots once in a while. Personally, I really enjoy the 162 after having learned how to best use it. If you like boom and zoom aircraft to the max, then the Volkshaker will be up your alley. If you on the other hand like regular dogfighting and planes with secondary weapons, you should just disregard the 162. But that was about it. Thank you for watching, and until next time, remember to deploy your die brakes. Have a good one.